Let's, uh, let's focus in on some positive news from the local economy. We had a vehicle sales data yeah. out today for the month of, of September, 30% up year on year. What did you take from the numbers? Be careful with the comparisons. Yes, it looks good, uh, you know, just taking one month on its own. Yeah. But remember, September a year ago was a, was a, a base which had come after a low base, after the uh, June and July and August rush when there was a lot of extra spending and that then died down. September a year ago was a very quiet year. So that's the comparison we're making. If we look at it on year-to-date sales, yes, it's looking quite a lot better, but we're still only at the total number of sales where we were about four years ago. I think that's got to be taken into account. And that really painting the picture of what we're seeing overall in the global economy where uh, demand is very lackluster, the consumer is not in a good space right now, and perhaps you know, the equity sell-off that we're seeing could continue until we see any real growth in the economy coming through. Yes, I'd just like to go back to for one uh, moment to the, to the vehicle sales. You know, even the big spenders are not spending. We've been averaging between 60 or 90 Porsches every month. That's what the, where the big spending is. Last month, it was 20. There's so a that's a sign there, that the it? wealthy are starting to really feel Pull the pinch back a little bit point. as well. And that's also being reflected in the equity market. The not so well off are not in shares. That's it. And so they're pulling back everywhere. Everybody is going for liquidity, conserving capital. And I think that's the, the new modus now. What is your response to those who say that market commentators are talking the markets down? Because every day we have a headline about Europe and the banking crisis there. It's been the same for the majority of this year. The state of the economy, the world economy. There, uh, we had it up there just now, I'm sorry. Uh, the oil price at $100. That's the lowest it's been for quite a long time. That must reflect future economic activity. Therefore, I think economic activity is in fact shrinking and that's what markets are going to do in touch with them. And reflection of what the banks are seeing, we've got Goldman Sachs cutting Brent yes. crude's uh, forecast and uh, you know Credit Suisse raising the gold price forecast. Just if you look at uh, equity flows though in the last 10 days we've had a net uh, foreigners net buyers of local equities while they've been selling bonds. Is this a shift in preference for uh, asset classes in South Africa? Is this significant? I think to some extent it was end of week, end of month, end of quarter position squaring. There's a lot of that. And, uh, and, but I, I think that the net outflow year to date is gathering momentum. And you can see it in the strain it's putting on the RAND exchange rate. I think that that is reflective of where the real money flows are going. They're going back to safe havens, US treasuries and gold. Let's look at uh, some Credit Suisse. Credit Suisse coming out yes. with a lot of uh, updates today in terms of forecasts. When, it looks, when we're looking at local equities, they've started covering some South African retailers. Now, just looking at their preference there, they, they've got uh, Steinhoff, Fashini, Woolies, and True Words as uh, their top picks when right. it comes to local retailers. Spa, Lewis, and JD Group outperformers. And that versus the bigger retailers like MassMart, Pick and Pay, and ShopRite. Are you reading anything into uh, these forecasts? Definitely. I think Mass Mart are bringing a new competitive era into the big retailers, the mass discounters. And I think that what they're going to do is make life difficult. They're going to look for, gr for growth opportunities for themselves, but they'll make life difficult for their major competitors, the likes of ShopRite and, uh, and Pick and Pay. It's going to be tougher for them. And it's interesting, those two who we would have thought would be leaders are only being put at market average performance, whereas a, a, a smaller store like Spa, which is not going to really be competition for mass market. And Woolies as well, also added to that smaller too. list. Yeah. A different market field. So I think that they are being shown as outperformers. That just shows where we're going to see the new element of competition in the retail sector. When we look at the clothing retailers, we've got Fashini with a price target of 115 Rand, True Words with a price target of 89 Rand. Uh, do you have any preference between these two stocks? Wow, that's a difficult one. I think it depends on the market level at a particular time or their share price at a little at the particular time. But I think that Fashini has the right uh, the right recipe for a broad spread of satisfying the client that they know who prepared to pay a little bit more for the slightly better quality stock that they offer and the range that they offer. They consistently cater for that and that's why I take them in the longer run. Right, Fashini was around eighty four Rand. If that's your top stock pick, do you have any kind of price that you'd get in at this, uh, <laughs> you know, would you be getting it at this level down one and a half percent today? I wouldn't be a buyer per se. And I think that that is the important thing to say. Yes, you get times when you get relatively good value. Do, does one want to be a, a buyer first and foremost? That must be top of the shopping list, not necessary for today. Yes, let's move on to Ultron. 
Uh, that's a company reporting results out today, 19% drop yes. in a first half basic uh, earnings per share. You look at the price, 25 Rand 50, of course an investment company. Yes. Uh, do, you, do you like the underlying assets of this company? I would always rather buy the assets. You can pick and choose those. If you have to buy a holding company, you don't have that choice. Um, I, I'm just a little bit disappointed. It's always what we're going to do never what we have done, yeah. and you never see it consolidating. You know, repaying the, uh, the shareholders for extraordinary patience. Uh, I think that that is one of the problems with Altron as a group and of the individual operating companies And at what too. point in time are we going to see the earnings filtering through? Because, of course, it operates in areas where we know there is uh, room for growth in South Africa and Africa, telecommunications, mm -hmm. IT, and where companies are spending. And yet their earnings are down. And very high capital requirements. Now that's a problem. Mm. Uh, they're going to look good on a growth basis and on a vers diversification basis. But when will the shareholders get repaid? I don't think see that in the short term. Very quickly, Sassel, we've had a, a yeah. Goldman Sachs, or sorry, just a, another company coming out and uh, downgrading their forecast for that price. Uh, sitting at 330 Rand 89 today, they see upside potential in the price to around 430 Rand. Your thoughts? Uh, it's, it remains on our good value list. Uh, we think that a real case can be made for buying Sassel at or anything around this sort of level. And uh, so, so the answer is very positive on the outlook there.